My name is Conrad Ott. I'm a philosopher. And in what follows, I want to make four points about sustainability which are essential to any deeper understanding of this concept. The first point is about history. The second is about ethics. The third is about concepts. And the final point is about politics. More than 300 years ago, it was a German forester, Hans Karl Karlowitz, who argued that uh, current generations should not live at the expense of future ones. And in these days, there were tendencies of deforestation in Germany, and Karlowitz argued that it is wrong to deforest and cut down all the trees because then this would result in a lack of timber for future generations. In the US, it was George Perkins March who developed the idea of a wise use of natural resources in 1864. And Perkins Marsh had the idea that nature is a bountiful stock of capital and the living human beings are entitled to live by the interest of this capital, but they should not encroach upon the capital itself, should not deplete and should not destroy it. At the end of the 19th century, the idea of sustainability was applied to marine resources, especially oysters, by marine scientist Carl August Möbius. And in this respect, Möbius even invented some ideas about ecosystems as units that should be taken into account for sustainability research. So it is fair to say that early ecological research and the more normative idea of sustainability were closely connected to each other in the years before the First World War. Many years later, the Brundtland Report had a different focus. The focus was on the fulfilling of basic human needs. All human beings are entitled uh, to fulfill their basic needs. But by this famous and often quoted definition of the Brundtland Report, a dialectical tension occurred within the idea itself. Because living within the limits of nature or within planetary boundaries is a distinct idea from the more human humanitarian idea that all human beings should fulfill their basic needs. And this tension is alive in the sustainable development goals uh, which we have right now. And ethics may explain this tension within the idea itself. My second point is about ethics. Sustainability is intrinsically an ethical co concept because it deals with obligations, with rules, with objectives, with states of the world that should be reached or should be avoided. Therefore, rules, norms and values all the way down and that's unavoidable. Sustainability ethics draws from two sources of normativity. The first source is a theory of distributive justice. Distributive justice is about how goods and access to resources should be distributed over persons, groups, and even generations according to moral entitlements people have. 
The second source of normativity is environment lattice, which deals with the many values which can be found in nature. There are different types of values in nature. There are the many instrumental or reliance values because humans are reliant on so many um, natural beings. And then there are cultural values as for instance aesthetic appreciation of nature, spiritual encounters with nature, recreation in the outdoors and all the things we appreciate uh, as human beings. And a third category of value is inherent moral value that gives some natural entities a moral standing for their own sake. My third point is about concepts and the conceptual problems within sustainability are very often to be debated with economists and therefore my third point uh, is put in economic parlance. In economic theory it is widely accepted that natural capital is a real type of capital. It is a stock that yields different kind of flows which can be dubbed ecosystem services by which human beings are benefited in many different ways. The theoretical problem is now whether parts or most of this type of capital can be substituted or can not be substituted against other kinds of capital as social capital, man-made capital, knowledge and so on. And here we have a deep divide between two concepts of sustainability. One is called weak sustainability, the other is called strong sustainability. Weak sustainability assumes that there are large degrees of substitutability uh, between types of capital and that natural capital might be depleted over time if there are reasonable and high saving rates and high investment rates in other type of capital. Strong sustainability casts doubts on this optimism with respect to substitutability of nature. The values of environmental ethics, a principle of precaution, the multifunctionality of many ecological systems should make us more sober and maybe even a bit skeptical with respect to substitutability. And substitutability is not just a technical affair, it is also a cultural affair because many people do not wish that part of nature are substituted maybe by urban sprawl or by uh, some um, industrial infrastructures. So strong sustainability holds a constant natural capital rule which says remaining natural capital should be held constant over time, should not be depleted anymore and should, if possible, restored to some state of ecological integrity. To my mind there are sound reasons to opt for strong sustainability 
And therefore, I would like to make a case that the SDG on ocean sustainability should be interpreted in terms of strong sustainability. And this is now the turn to my final point about politics. It is clearly a step forward that we now have a sustainable development goal with respect to oceans, marine systems and coastlines. What we need in the year to come is to add programs, strategies, sets of objectives and even instruments of how to reach them because only by doing so this sustainable development goal becomes more specific and it becomes a political approach. I would say my general attitude is a sober optimism and I think that sustainability is a kind of realistic utopia. It can be reached if there is a kind of political will.